Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for High Velocity Radio. Lee Cantor here, another episode of High Velocity Radio, and this is going to be a fun one. Today on the show, we have Jennifer Irwin, author of the new book, A Dress of the Color of the Moon. Welcome, Jennifer. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, I'm excited to learn about your book, and I'm also curious about life as an author. Uh, so before we get too far into things, tell us a little bit about the book. How did the idea come about for you? Um, it's a standalone sequel to my debut novel, um, which won seven awards and has been optioned for a movie. And basically, um, it's a story of a woman who um, is checking into rehab for sex addiction um, and goes back and forth in time. So you learn her story and what happened in her life and how she ended up where she is. Um, there's a cast of characters in rehab. So in a dress color of the moon, I bring those characters. Um, so she's just checking out of rehab. She has all of her tools that she learned there. And I bring a few of the characters to Los Angeles. Um, and it's this sort of trials and tribulations of some of them make it, some of them not don't how they put their pieces of their lives back together. Um, rebuilding relationships that have been broken, trust that has been broken. Um, and it, it's a very it's a, a, a very interesting insight into how people handle um, the recovery process and, and what it looks like. Now, um, on this show, we've interviewed a lot of authors, most of which have been nonfiction authors. Is there um, kind of a different kind of methodology when it comes to writing a fiction book? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I know in nonfiction, they outline, they have some points they want to get across, but in fiction, there has to be kind of a story arc. There has to be mm -hmm. kind of sympathetic characters. There has to be a hero. There has to be some, you know, redemption. Maybe there has to certain kind of elements of story have to take place that aren't necessarily true in a nonfiction book. Yeah, I mean, I did a lot of research and my work um, falls in the category of biographical fiction. It does read like a biography and feels a lot like a biography when you read it. Um, but I did want to create a realistic um, therapeutic environment um, and what the process looks like. So I did have to do a lot of research. Um, but other than that, um, I do follow the, the fiction um, format with character arcs and heroes. I do, I, my writing is character driven. Right? Um, and so I, I really work on character development, um, even flipping characters, flipping their, from being likable to unlikable and, and vice versa. Um, but I, I'm a, what they call a pantser. So I write um, without really having it all plotted out. I just sort of let the story unfold as I do the work. So you have an idea for how the story begins and then you just start writing and then let it just kind of evolve as it goes? Yeah. Yep. And the first draft is pretty disastrous and you just take it from there and keep working on it and working and tweaking it and fine tuning it until it's, it's, uh, it's ready to go. So how do you know when you have kind of a, uh, characters or a story that's resonating and clicking? Um, I think it's just, uh, for me, it's, it's really a gut feeling where, um, I just, uh, because I've been doing this now for a while and I, and I have a better idea of what works and where I'm at. And, um, it typically takes seven drafts to complete a novel. And, um, I really, that's, that's sort of the rule of thumb and it actually is pretty true. It, it just, um, I, I try to look at everything with a small, I take a small section and work on it and then continue just doing that. And there's just a moment where you, you know, it's, it's ready to go. And, and then what I typically do is I go, I send them out to beta readers. I have a, 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 some re readers that like to take a look at my work and let me know how it's, how it's resonating with them. And I'll get some feedback and then send it over to my agent. Now, how do you kind of um, prevent the story from spiraling where like you're going down this one rabbit hole and then you like, how do you remember, oh, I got to bring these other characters back in or I'll, you know, it's been a while since we've talked about these guys. Yeah, that's that's definitely tough. And I typically write um, 
a more diff- difficult story structure and this address the color of the moon um, goes not, not only back and forth in time, but it goes from first person to third person. So um, I, I, when it comes to that, I, I sometimes I, I count on my beta readers, but I also um, have a writing app that I use that helps you focus on where you are and what ca- what's happening with each character, and you can keep track of it that way. I'm just starting to use this um, app. It's 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 pretty complex, and it's been a lot for me to get to, to figure it out. But once you get into it and and figure out how it all works, it's been it's been eased, made it a lot easier for me. Um, but I guess it's just for for me. I just I'm really close to these characters and it's kind of hard to just not have them keep coming back in this, when you're writing the story, because I, of the way, especially with the dress, the color of the moon, I have them all gathering at the very end for a funeral um, of someone from the previous book that committed suicide. So um, I go into the different things and experiences of each of those people and how their lives intertwine after rehab. Um, I don't know. I just, I guess somehow I just try to, I keep it on track. And, um, and if I miss something, typically a beta reader will let me know, believe me, they're, they're good. Do you, um, do you kind of track each, each character, like with index cards, like, uh, um, some writers, you know, kind of follow the path of character by character, maybe a different color card for each character to make sure that they have a true arc and that they are kind of growing. Um, like, how do you keep track? Is there uh, any tools you use or you mentioned the software yeah. or is it just your memory that, Hey, let, let me, let me just kind of search for that. I haven't mentioned this name in a while. Um, I, I use a software. So which, software is the which, tool. Yeah. It, it's a writing software that um, it basically um, keeps track of all that for you and you can even get deep into the characters, interview your characters, keep track of your characters. Um, and it, it's, it, it's a, it's, it's a very, it's, a, it's an app that a lot of writers use and has, it's very, it keeps everything really, really organized for you. I, I'm not the three by five card thing is just a little too um, archaic for me. Now let's talk a little bit about the business of being an author. Um, was this something that you kind of accidentally fell into or is this something that you've been kind of, um, you know, aiming your career towards all along? Um, I, it's not, it's definitely not something I accidentally came into. I worked in advertising and I um, was always working on telling a story through ads and through television commercials. And then I, um, Worked in another industry where I was um, launching products for corporations like McDonald's and Burger King, where they bring a lot of people to um, a conference and have staging and set design and sort of like a, a Broadway show that happens for the salespeople to launch a product. So I worked in that industry for a while. Um, and I, I, I just, um, after I, I got divorced, I really wanted to get into my life and my childhood and things that happened and why did I choose this person? And um, I've been teaching Pilates for many years while I was raising my boys and was writing at night. And um, I'd written a screenplay in college that got me into this arts program. And I sort of springboarded that screenplay along with some of the experiences that I had gone through with my marriage and divorce and, um, and my childhood and, kind of created this this story that has resonated with a lot of people and surprisingly more men than I could ever imagine have posted reviews which has been kind of a nice surprise actually so now you write the book um this is just on your own this is like you don't sell the book before you write the book you write the book and then you use the book as a way to get an agent and then to sell it is that how it works yeah so the way that the first book happened was I, at the time I was querying agents and I ended up selling the film um, rights to the book or optioning the film rights to the book before I published it. So um, it can typically take years to get a book published after you sign with an agent. And so the film option um, put a bit of sense of urgency on me getting the book out to market. Um, 
months. Um, and so basically, because at the time I, I, I thought this producer was going to be moving really fast and getting this film, get, getting the film made, um, which she ended up not doing, but I ended up publishing indie and jumping into the business of being my own book marketing guru, I guess you might say. So that's where all those advertising and marketing years were now paying off, huh? Right. So I basically taught myself um, how to build a social media platform, how to market on social media, how to run Amazon ads, what the Amazon algorithm is. Um, and I also um, used myself as a writer and as someone that has written about addiction and recovery and um, divorce and childhood trauma and a lot of experiences many people either know someone that have gone through or have gone through themselves and use these personal experiences um, to share about myself not just as a writer but as a person and so created a platform of followers that um, have has grown exponentially and um, helped me sell books basically um i use i mostly use twitter and instagram and facebook um you know i'm also on linkedin but um i run at, i run promotions every quarter for my first book through a variety of different programs and um i discount the kindle edition for that um and then when i'm not running the 99 cent kindle edition promotions i run consistently every week run 10 to 12 ads on amazon um, and it's, there's a complex way that you run the ads and get them in the right categories and book titles. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's a hustle. It, it's, it, it's a lot easier if you sign with a big publisher, but even right now, I mean, like you said, you mostly promote nonfiction authors. Um, those books can get to market a little faster. Um, memoirs of celebrities obviously do really well, but the days of, of pub, big publishers spending a, a lot of money on a on on releasing a book or it, those are the, those days are gone that's not happening much anymore um unless it's a super big you know celebrity or fa you know famous person is sending their memoir to market so how did you get in front of the producer to uh, option the film rights how did that come about um so it was someone that i had sent the manuscript to to get a, some feedback before i was pitching it to um to agents and that um the reader had was so moved by the story that um i um i received a text message they wanted to purchase the film rights and um it's basically it was it's it, it's a billionaire who has not been in the film industry, but her daughter um, graduated from the USC Masters Film School of Cinematic Arts um, and was you know, is involved in the film business. Um, and she was very moved by the story and, and said she wanted to make the movie. So that was just, again, the hustle and the doing kind of the grind of the work and then opportunity kind of just clicked and it found you and you found it. Yeah, and... Um, yeah, that was, you know, that was really lucky. Um, and on, then on top of that, um, I, I, my book won seven awards, which, which also got me, um, so the different awards programs promote your book for you and, um, you know, get your book out there to, to, to their, you know, their platform. So that, that was very, very helpful. Um, I, the book community on social media is very, very powerful. There's some very powerful book bloggers. Many of the bigger ones are um, on the, the big five publishing companies send books out to them. I can't really touch those ones. The ones that have massive amounts of followers um, typically don't look at indie authors. I mean, there is a stigma still for um Authors that publish small press like mine, which we do not, you know, we can't really have our books at Barnes and Noble because there isn't a publisher paying Barnes and Noble to put our books on the shelves. So when we, we do a book signing at a Barnes and Noble, that's great. But our books end up in the back in a box. Nobody's, you know, they're not put on the shelf because Barnes and Noble doesn't have financial motivation to put the book on the shelf. 
So, I mean, there's a lot of roadblocks as an indie author, but at the same time, um, my royalties are mine. I'm not sharing them with anyone, um, you know, so that, that in itself, and you end up being able to manage your own career and decide, um, you know, where you want to, where, how you want your career to go as a writer. Um, and the other thing that's a little difficult is like, for example, Reese's book club and hello sunshine are snatching up film rights to books left and right, but you will, you know, you, you just won't see them reading or promoting an indie published book ever. So, um, in the game of, you know, life, it's who, you know, sometimes as well, you know, so you don't have the connections, your book's not going to get into those big influencers hands. Um, unless, unless like what happened to me, you get it in someone's hands who happens to be, um, to have deep pockets and be able to make a movie regardless of whether they have any connections in the movie business. So there's, you know, it does happen. It's just, it's not that easy. So it sounds like, um, if you want to pursue being an author as a career or um, even a hustle, a side hustle, you got to build a community. You have to kind of use your network and expand your network and hustle and grind. And, and uh, there's no shortcuts here. But again, the bottom line, good work gets found, right? I mean, uh, yeah, you yeah. know, if you're doing good work, someone's going to pay attention to it. Yeah, no, and it's true. And honestly, um, there, there's a lot of courses on how to do book advertising, how to run ads um, for your book. And um, a lot of indie authors are making a really good living on their books. The more books you write, the more followers you have, the more readers you have. And without even wanting to, I, as a social media um, person, I've, I now have businesses reaching out to me for sponsored posts and, offering me products and um, I'm an ambassador for rent the runway. So I'm, I'm wearing their clothes and, um, and getting perks from them. So there's just a lot of things that happened because I was hustling on social media um, that I didn't expect to have happen. Um, you know, there's a whole stigma that writers are, are like introverts and sitting with their head in the sand. But the bottom line is even if you publish with a big five, they want to know you're going to do the work and get your book out there and do your own marketing as well. They don't want someone that isn't going to be helping get their spread the word about their work. And um, I, you know, I, I believe in what I do. I believe in my writing. I believe in my stories and um, I just keep hustling and don't give up. And um, there's been a lot of highs and lows, just like there is when you're launching a product, you're going to have, you're going to hit roadblocks, but you just, you can't give up. You just have to keep going. Right. And ultimately you're in control. You're betting on yourself. Right. Exactly. You're betting on yourself. And, and also, you know, when you publish with a big five and you have an agent, a lot of your royalties go to your agent and the rest goes to your publisher. Um, a lot of these, and, and honestly, when I look at, I take a lot of writing courses where a big five published author will talk about their their story and how they got where they are. And I'll, while they're, while I'm taking the class, I'll look their book up on Amazon and my book will have far more reviews, a higher rating than their book. And, you know, it's because number one, my writing's good. My books are good. Readers speak for me. They rate the book and I can't make up my, out my rating on Amazon. That's done by the readers. Um, and, and I have a lot of reviews and when a reader is compelled to write a review, that's a really big deal because I, you know, I can on, honestly tell you I've sold a lot more books than there are reviews, obviously. But but getting reviews is a big deal because that means someone was so moved, either they hated your book or they loved your book, but they wanted to write a review. And that's a really, really um, big deal to have a solid amount of reviews on Amazon. Well, Jennifer, congratulations on all the success. If somebody wants to learn more about Address the Color of the Moon or your other book or just uh, hang out with you and your community, is there a website? Yeah, jenniferirwinauthor.com. And all my social media is at Jen Irwin Author. All right, Jennifer, thank you again for sharing your story. You're doing important work and we appreciate you. Oh, thank you so much, Lee. I appreciate you having me on your show. All right, this is Lee Cantor. We will see you all next time on High Velocity Radio.